Welcome back to Differential Calculus. This video is on concavity, which is probably more or less meaningless to you right now, but we'll hope to change that by the end of the video. Perhaps a more useful title to this video would have been a geometric interpretation of the second derivative, but that's entirely too wide to fit on the video title. We've analyzed the first derivative fairly extensively, right? The first derivative is the rate of change of the function. And we saw that show up as something very similar to slope. And in fact, instantaneously, the rate of change of a function at a point is the slope of the tangent line. But speaking more generally, if I'm looking at an arbitrary curve, right, I can think about a secant line. How fast is this function changing between a couple of points? And the closer the points are, the smaller that becomes. That's where we get the instantaneous. That's where we get to the derivative. But on average, how fast is the function changing? That's what the first derivative is trying to interpret. The second derivative is the rate of change of the first derivative. So I guess that would be the rate of change of the slope. And once again, that doesn't necessarily make sense at first glance, but if we stop and we explore that for a little bit, then it will make a lot of sense and hopefully fairly quickly. So let's start off with graphing a function that has a constant positive slope. Constant positive slope is fairly straightforward. That is what we know as a straight line. What then would an increasing positive slope look like? Well, an increasing positive slope would start off a little bit positive, and then it would get a little bit more positive, and a little bit more positive, and a little bit more positive, and a little bit more positive. So a function with an increasing positive slope is going to be a function that curls upward like this. And then for comparison's sake, a decreasing positive slope Well, we're going to start off with the curve moving in a positive direction and then still positive, but less and still positive, but less and still positive, but less. We're going to get this curve that kind of curls in a downward direction. And then we can do the same thing with a negative slope. A constant negative slope is again a line. A decreasing negative slope is going to become more and more negative as you go across the line. An increasing negative slope is going to become less and less negative, so it shallows out. And what I want you to notice in this figure, 
Uh, I've kind of filled the board so I don't really have room to put my head in with everything else and point at things. But notice that when you have a decreasing slope, you kind of get this curl that curves around a point below the curve. When you have an increasing slope, you get a curve that curls around a point above the curve. Right? If you can think about any individual small point in there as being kind of circular arcs, the curves are all going around something above, the curves are all going around something below. That's how we are going to classify things. We are going to describe a curve as concave down, whether it is increasing or decreasing, as long as it is curling around some point below the curve. We're going to describe something as concave up, whether it is increasing or decreasing function, as long as it is curling around some point above it. And whether the slope is increasing or decreasing, whether the first derivative is positive or negative, we get the concave down case when the rate of change of the slope was negative. The slope was always decreasing here. which means that concave down is always going to arise from a negative second derivative. Likewise, concave up will arise from a positive second derivative. Right. So now we have a meaning to the second derivative. The second derivative tells us how a curve appears. Does it curl upward? Does it curl downward? And just like our study of the first derivative, the only way you can go from an increasing function with a positive first derivative to a decreasing function with a negative first derivative is for the first derivative to either go through zero or go through a moment where it's undefined. Those are the only possibilities. We called those critical points on the first derivative. On the second derivative, the same story. The only way to go between concave up and concave down is for the second derivative to either be zero or undefined. We'll call those points points of inflection. All right, so points of inflection are the transition between these two. Depending on the source that you look at, a lot of calculus textbooks claim that points of inflection only exist when you actually do transition, much like the maximum and minimum with the first derivative. Sure, there are critical values that are neither. Likewise, points of inflection sometimes show up in weird places, but it tends to be that even if you go from a region of concave up to another region of concave up, a point of inflection represents a place where the graph does something strange. So they're worth noting even if they don't actually see a transition between them. All right. And so we can analyze our function. Let's take a look at a fairly simple example. How about a polynomial f of x equals 5x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x plus 7. 
if I take the first derivative of this function, f prime of x is 15x squared plus 6x minus 9. And we can solve this equation and look for uh, critical values so that we can find maximums and minimums. And that is certainly something that can be interesting. We'll look more into that in a future video and the connection between first derivatives and second derivatives in a future video. But for our purposes right now, let's jump right ahead to the second derivative, which looks like it's going to be 30x plus 6. And points of inflection will be points where this equation, 30x plus 6, is equal to 0. Solving that equation is fairly straightforward. It's a nice linear equation. x equals negative 1 fifth. And much like we did, Again, with the first derivative, if I plot negative one-fifth on a number line and I start looking around it, if I look at something above negative one-fifth, like zero, I get out that the second derivative is positive. If I look at something below negative one-fifth, like negative one, well, 30 times negative one is negative 30, plus six is negative 24, which comes out negative. So this graph will be concave up on the interval from negative one-fifth onward forever to infinity, and this graph will be concave down from negative infinity up to negative one-fifth. All right, I don't know why my screen was messing around like that, but uh, we'll wrap up with one for you to try the exact same instructions. Identify all points of inflection and then identify regions where the function is concave up or concave down. Right. So the function here, f of x equals x to the fifth minus 5x cubed. Take a couple of minutes, see what you can do with this one, and I'll see you in the next video.